my name is Marcus, and I couldn't be more delighted uh, than I am to be with you today. So thank you so much for having me. Uh, I'm a professor at the University of Michigan, Ross School of Business. Uh, go, but you know it. You know it. Um, but I also run the Consumer Connections practice at Donor Advertising. And my practice sits right in the convergence of three things. The behavioral sciences, that is understanding the causality-based theory of human behavior. Understanding also the evolving media landscape and how it sheds tons of data that allows us to better understand people. And of course, the third, having a close proximity to culture. And what I want to do today is spend some time talking about this idea of close proximity to culture. Now, we say this colloquially. We say we're, you know, we're doing it for the culture. Um, and the idea, when people say that, what they mean is that we're doing it for the people who share the same beliefs, who don the same artifacts, who subscribe to the same behaviors, and ultimately use the same language as me. Because when these four things are beliefs, the artifacts, the behaviors, and the language, when they're adopted among a populace, the alchemy of this is said to represent the culture. And we see this demonstrated by people's ethnicity. We see it sometimes in their nationalities. We definitely see it in their religion. We also see it when it comes to our passion points. And when these things are aggregated, they're said to represent our culture. And culture sidesteps all the conventional propositions that we know of marketing. From the value proposition, the differentiators, the, the, the functionalities. Culture sidesteps all those things, particularly because culture is about our identity. We use these cultures to self-identify. And we use these brands to help become shortcuts or badges of our identity. It's almost like a peacock who... who who demonstrates itself, who presents itself to say, this is who I am. Who else out there wants to get down, right? And now this seems obvious, I know. But here's the thing. The obvious usually isn't obvious until someone points it out to you. Take, for instance, this. A friend of mine pointed this out to me. Take you back to 1964. In 1964, this was the sonic silhouette of American culture. Um, just check it out. Ah! It's better. So this is Bobby Vinton's There, I Said It Again. My friend Yaki pointed this out to me. This was the number one song in the country in 1964. Um, and not only was this the number one song in the country in 1964, this is actually what the American soundscape sounded like in 1964 until January 1964 when this happened. <laughs> The Beatles descend. I mean, go ahead and sing along if you want to. <laughs> the Beatles descend on, on, on America and completely change the sonic silhouette of culture. Now you hear that, you're like, yo, duh, it's the Beatles, dude. They're the, the goats. Of course, of course they did. But funny, funny. People didn't feel that way back in 1964. In fact, this is what the Chicago Tribune said: the Beatles must be a huge joke, a wacky gag, a gigantic put-on. 1964. Boston Globe said the Beatles are not only not merely awful, I would consider it sacrilege to say they're anything less than God awful. Whew, tough crowd. Newsweek, visually they're a nightmare, tight, dentified, Edwardian beatnik suits are, and putting bowls of hair. I mean, these guys go for the jugular. <laughs> now, these are supposed to be the arbiters of culture. This is the media. They're supposed to be arbiters of culture. Even the tastemakers, even the, the culture at the time. Elvis Presley, the Beatles laid the groundwork for many of the problems we're having with young people by their filthy, unkept appearances as suggested in music. Really? Elvis? You? With the hips? Really, dude? How could he miss this? I tell you, because culture requires great proximity. And this wouldn't be the first time they missed it. They also missed it here. People say that hip-hop was just a fad. They say it wasn't even music. It was people talking over someone else's music. But now hip-hop is the number one genre of music in this country. The obvious usually isn't obvious until someone points it out to you. And culture requires great, great, great intimacy. And those who know this, they know. They know this. 
Those who subscribe to the cultures, they know this very well. Let, let, let's test this out. So say you're going to the store, you're going to Target to buy some headphones. We get some headphones, listen to some music. And you go to the electronic section and you see a line full of headphones, right? Just a line full of headphones. What headphones are you likely to buy? Even though they all look the same, which one are you likely to buy? I'm sorry, I'm asking a question, so it's a question mark. Which one are you likely to buy? Beats. Beats, yes. I just met y'all, right? <laughs> right, but we know this concurrently. That Beats is what we do. And it's not because Beats is the greatest headphones ever. If Beats is in the house, I'm sorry. But Beats has become the sonic, the, the visual silhouette of American culture, which is interesting because before Beats, it used to be white earbuds, muted, innocuous earbuds. Now they're big, over-the-ear earbuds. This is what the silhouette of American culture looks like. And it's not because the products are so great. In fact, two years ago, or three years ago, rather, Someone dissected a pair of Beats headphones and found that it only takes $17 to make a Beats headphone. I know you see that and you're like, excuse me? <laughs> yes, yes. It's no question then, Beats, 46% of the market share. Not because the products are so great, but because the brand has a close proximity to culture. Makes sense, yeah? If you don't know, now you know. What are these? Louis Vuittons. Yeah, but what else do they call it? Look at y'all. Red bottles. Are oh, look, red bottles. This is bloody shoes. Right? We know this because of Cardi, right? We know this. I, I like the culture in the room. I dig it. We know this because of Cardi and, and Bodak Yellow. But did you know that because of the cultural saliency of Cardi being Bodak Yellow, we found that Christian Louis Vuitton saw a search increase 217% because of its impact on culture. What are the, what's this? What brand is this? Jordan, right? It's also called Jumpman. Um, who jumped over Jumpman in 2016? Who jumped over Jumpman? What? No. <laughs> Please remove yourself. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Yeezy Yeezy just jumped over Jumpman. Yeezys, the Yeezys, right? We know this because uh, Adidas went from number three sneaker brand in the country to overcoming brand Jordan to become number two. And it's often referred to as the Yeezy effect, right? The Kanye effect. Now look, whether you like the man or not, because he's, he's been disappointing a lot of people these days, he certainly has cultural wake. And just for the record, I love the old Kanye. Straight from the gold Kanye. Chop up the soul Kanye. Selling his gold Kanye. That's another story for another day. 